Today in this video, I'll be demonstrating for you how to use a shutter release cable with the medium format Mamiya RZ67. Now, I'll admit, this is a rather niche thing. I doubt most people out there would you know, really care to know this. But the reason I'm making this video is because I recently tried to find this information. I went, you know, to all the dark corners of the internet to try and uh, learn how to do how to use a shutter release cable with the Mamiya here, not just to release a shutter, but also to do long exposure images as well. And because it's a rather old camera, I mean, you know, we're talking about cameras, film cameras from like the 80s and 90s. The information can be somewhat uh, hard to come by. And sometimes when you do find it, it's rather incomplete. And that's exactly what I found. So I'll be demonstrating for you here three different ways to use a shutter release cable with this camera. The first two methods will be just to simply trigger the shutter, while the third method will be for creating long exposure images where you just keep the shutter open for as long as you want in order to uh, like, you know, blur clouds in the sky or blur water or whatever it is you're trying to do uh, creatively with your photography. Okay, so let's begin with the first method and that is attaching the shutter release cable directly to the shutter button here on the front of the camera body. Now, before you do this, it's really important um, to make sure that you have the shutter button here on the front of the camera locked. You don't want to be, you know, sticking something in here, uh, you know, when the camera is active with film in it and all that kind of stuff because you could accidentally take an image. So to lock the shutter button here so you can be messing around with it, there's a little dial and it has a white dot on it. And when that white dot is aligned with the white dot underneath it, that means that it's active and it's ready to shoot. But to lock it, you twist it over to this red dot that's uh, here on the side of the camera. And by the way, this is something that uh, sometimes trips people up with this camera. Sometimes they try to use it and the shutter button won't fire. Well, a lot of times the problem isn't something else mechanical with the camera. It's just that the button is locked and they forget to you know, check this here. But anyway, so you want to lock the button down so that, you know, it can't fire. And then you attach this end of the, <laughs> yeah, these, uh, these, uh, cables are, are rather unwieldy. So anyway, uh, we thread this on to the shutter button here on the front and then very carefully just twist that, that black dial back so that the white dots are, are aligned once again. And then with that, we are ready to take an image. You just press the plunger at the end of the cable release and you take an image. Now, the really important thing to do next, this is something, this is like a rookie mistake, but you don't want to do this. You don't want to advance the film with the shutter uh, cable still pressed because, well, the camera then takes another image. So what you want to do after you, you know, press this down and you hear that an image has been captured, you want to make sure that you release the cable down here at the end. The button then won't fire when you advance the film. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the second way to do the exact same thing, except we're not gonna use the shutter button here on the front of the camera, but rather we're going to use this, uh, this input here on the side of the Mamiya lens. Now this method is better in my opinion, because then we're not having to lock and unlock the, uh, the shutter button on the front of the camera. It wouldn't surprise me if there's less uh, vibration uh, by going this route uh, as well. And I think it just gives uh, the photographer like a little more control over you know, what exactly is going on uh, with the camera when taking an image. And what you'll notice when you do this is that when you start threading this on, the uh, that silver thread inside of the lens will, it'll start to come out. And when it comes out, you will see a red line around that thread. Okay, so now we're ready to take an image, but this is now a two-step process. The first step is pressing the shutter button uh, here on the front of the camera. And let's take a listen to that. That sound that you heard is not the camera actually taking an image, but that is rather the mirror inside of the camera body flipping up and then the, the leaf shutter uh, inside of the Mamiya lens here completely closing down. So no image has been taken. The camera is just simply waiting for us to push the, uh, the plunger at the end of the cable release here to open and close the shutter. Now, if you leave it in this state for too long with the mirror flipped up and with the, and with the shutter closed in the lens, the camera will start making a sound. And I think it starts after about a minute and let's just wait a second until it, uh, until it starts. Basically it's the thing where the Mamiya is just telling you that, uh, that it cannot keep the mirror up for longer than uh, 60 seconds, which shouldn't be a problem because 
the slowest shutter speed on the camera on this dial over here is eight seconds. So the odds of going up to 60 seconds, you're probably never going to hear that sound, but I wanted you to hear it anyway, just in case you're like experimenting with the camera and messing around with it and you hear it and you're wondering what that is. Well, that's what that means. Okay, so let's do this for real now. On my shutter speed dial over here, I have two seconds dialed in so that you're able to see uh, the shutter opening and closing on video. And to begin taking an image with the cable connected to the side of the lens here, we again need to press the, uh, the shutter release on the front of the camera body. Again, the mirror goes up, the leaf shutter inside of the lens here closes, and now we press the, uh, the plunger on the end of the cable release. And notice what happens inside the lens. See that? So the shutter opened for two seconds and then it closed and we've now taken an image. Now, another advantage of using the cable release on the lens is that if you accidentally forget to uh, release the, uh, the cable release here and you advance the film, the camera does not take another image as it did when we had the cable release connected to the shutter release here on the front of the camera. So this is kind of like a, a nice, uh, you know, like, safety mechanism just in case out of habit you just you know push this thing forward and forget to you know do that okay so now i'm going to demonstrate for you how to create a long exposure image using the cable release now just like before in the second method we connect the uh the cable to the side of the lens over here so then you want to press the button in the center of the shutter speed dial here and then turn it to the red b now that b stands for bulb mode which allows you to keep the shutter open for uh, longer than eight seconds, which is the, the longest duration of time that uh, the Mamiya is capable of doing it on its own, but we can keep the shutter open for longer, however long we wanna uh, keep that shutter open to be creating long exposure images. Next, we need to engage the timer switch here on the Mamiya lens, and there's this little like uh, silver latch here on the, uh, on the switch, and you just press and hold that, uh, that latch, and then slide the switch over to the right, and then you should see a white uh, T mark uh, directly to the left of the switch. Now timer mode has been engaged on the lens. We have our shutter speed dial set to bulb mode, and now we are ready to take an image. So just like before, we begin by engaging the shutter on the front of the camera body. The mirror inside has flipped up. The shutter uh, inside the, uh, the lens here has closed down, and now it's waiting for us to tell it you know, when to open the shutter, which we'll go ahead and do by pressing this. And so now the shutter is open. And at this point, then it's kind of like up to you. I mean, I don't have my phone with me, but maybe you, you know, are using a timer on your phone. Maybe you're counting off seconds in your head. However long you want it uh, to stay open, uh, you basically just, you know, wait until that amount of time is over. And then in order to actually close the shutter, you don't go back to the cable. What you need to do is press this uh, silver latch here on the timer switch. And when you press it in, then the leaf shutter inside the lens closes and the image has now been taken. Personally, I wish there was a better way of, uh, of closing the shutter that didn't require having to physically touch the camera body, you know, because, you know, that could cause vibration in the camera, especially when creating a long exposure image. But this would appear to be uh, the standard way to, uh, to complete a long exposure image, just pushing in that little silver latch and disengaging the timer. All right, so short and sweet. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please take a moment and give this video a thumbs up down below. And if you would like to see another video about the Mamiya RZ67 and uh, Kodak Gold 200, the, the new Kodak Gold 200 that Kodak recently reissued for medium format cameras. I recently shot some rolls of it out in, um, in Washington State. I will link to that video. Is it here? I think it's here. I'll link to that video up here. Uh, check that out. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. And you can also sign up for my email newsletter if you would like to get a weekly newsletter from me, uh, providing you know updates on videos, reviews, tutorials, all that good stuff. You can sign up for that newsletter down below. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you next time.